Hey everybody. Alright, so um, we are going to talk about some notes on ramps. And ramps are kind of a cool thing. They're all, first of all, very common. Um, any hill that you travel down with your car, etc., um, can be considered a ramp. So, ramps have certain features. They're always going to have an angle, usually, al almost always defined with relationship to the horizontal. You have the object on the ramp, um, and really that's it, actually. So, we're going to try to do this a little bit more theoretical, um, get kind of the basic equations that you can then manipulate um, as needed. So, the trick with ramps is to rotate our xy axis. And the reason we do that is to make our lives a lot easier. Just like what you did with the um, equilibrium lab, where you put your graph paper in line with one of the axes or with one of the forces, so that you only have to calculate two components, you kind of do the same thing with ramps. So right now, this block has mass, so it has a force of gravity pulling straight down. But if it's pulling straight down, there's a whole set of weird things you would have to do because then that would say that this motion, but this is the motion like of the in the negative x direction. So if it's going down the ramp, you would have to find that component, and then same thing goes for here. The normal force also would set up um, on a ramp. The normal force is always perpendicular to a surface, so you'd have to find that component, you'd have to find that component going up the ramp if there's like friction or whatever so you'd have to find that component it just makes things so messy and if you look we got this one this one and this one all 90 degrees to each other so why not rotate our axis so that instead of all the other forces having components we just have FG having a component so what we do is we set it up that our Y we just rotate our y-axis is perpendicular to the ramp, and our, I couldn't think of the word, and our x-axis is parallel to the ramp. So x is parallel to ramp, y is perpendicular to the ramp surface. So when we break things apart, the only force that has any issue of not being in line with one of our directions is the force due to gravity. So the force due to gravity would get broken, that's the hypotenuse, would get broken into x and y components. This is fg cosine theta. This one would be fg sine theta from private because this is opposite side, adjacent side. So we just have to figure out what the angle is. Well, very conveniently through geometry, you could show it pretty easily. The angle of the ramp is the same exact angle as how much we have to rotate our axis. So whatever the ramp's angle is, is the same as the angle we use in our sine and cosine. So what is this set up? First of all, now we have taken apart our FG. We no longer care about it. I'm just canceling it out. In order for this thing to not go down the ramp or leave the ramp, our FG cosine theta, which is the piece going into the ramp, has to be the same as what the ramp is pushing up. So this green vector, called our normal force, the thing from the surface, perpendicular, remember I said normal means perpendicular to the surface, so perpendicular to the surface, that's why it's in the positive y direction as we redefined our axis. On a ramp, the normal force always equals FG cosine theta. And the force of gravity acting down the ramp, by the way, with ramps we sort of give a new direction. We have DTR and we have UTR. Down the ramp, up the ramp. Up the ramp still is our positive direction. Down the ramp would be our negative direction. So the force of gravity acting, another way to say this, is our FG parallel, it's the piece parallel to the ramp, so our FG parallel is FG times the sine of our angle. By the way, another way to say this one would be FG 
perpendicular. So we got those, and if there's no friction, friction would be acting up the ramp in this case. If there's no friction, our net force is going to be just mass times acceleration as always, and it would only we would only have one force acting down the ramp. We would have our FG parallel, which gives us a very cool equation. On a ramp, m times a, the net force, Fg parallel, if there's no friction, is Fg sine theta is just m times g, the force of gravity, times the sine theta. So m, Fg sine theta equals mg sine theta, and the m's cancel. So on a ramp with no friction, the acceleration of the block, or whatever's on the ramp, is exactly equal to the acceleration due to gravity times the sine of the angle of that ramp. What's awesome with that is it doesn't matter what the mass is. So I don't have to give you the mass in all, in all problems. The mass completely cancels out. The acceleration down the ramp with no friction is always equal to g sine theta. What if there was friction? Well, if there was friction, then you're going to have a friction force acting up the ramp. So that's no friction. This is with friction. Um, your friction force, whether static or kinetic, is mu s times the normal force, but we already defined that the normal force is fg cosine theta. Same way, same would go for ffk, mu k times the normal force. So, um, depending on what it is, if it's not sliding, As we've shown before, our acceleration is zero, so our net force is zero. So that means that our Fg parallel has to equal our FFs. They have to balance. You could do the same thing. Look for the maximum static friction, and you'll have these problems to try. Look for the maximum static friction force. Um, figure out if Fg parallel is pulling hard enough, or if you have an extra applied force. Um, the applied force might be down the ramp, it might be up the ramp. You would just deal with your positives or negatives. In terms of our FFK, if it's sliding, same idea. If it's sliding, then we just have to look at the kinetic friction acting up the ramp as opposed to static friction acting up the ramp. So, um, in general, let's look at this with no applied force. We want FA equals zero. We could again have an applied force. I can talk about that um, when you're working on your worksheet, how it simplifies or adds in. It's not all that difficult. Um, the net force would be, we would have Fg parallel down. We're going to have, let's say it's sliding. We're going to have F F acting up, FFK in this case. So our net force is mass times acceleration. It equals, we're going to do up the ramp because it's positive first, our FFK minus, because it's negative, down the ramp, our FG parallel. Now, I'm going to erase all this and rewrite what I just wrote. We had MA equals FFK minus FG parallel. Reminder, FFK is mu K times the normal force, and FG parallel is MG times the sine of the angle of the ramp. So far, so good. But we also had a, uh, an equation for normal force. MA equals mu K. The normal force was MG cosine theta minus MG sine theta. If you look, once again, mass is in there, mass is in there, mass is in there. So even with acceleration, even with a block sliding down the ramp, you have your FG parallel, you have your FFK 
acting, you have your Fg perpendicular, and you have your normal force. All of this is that our acceleration is mu k times the acceleration due to gravity times cosine of the angle minus the acceleration due to gravity times the sine of the angle on a ramp with friction, no other applied forces if fa equals zero. There's no other forces acting so you just have the block freely to slide up and down or down the ramp. The kinetic friction force acting would be mu k times g cosine theta minus g sine theta gives you the acceleration. So that's a very generic equation which you will be using a lot. So let's look at a sample problem in the next four minutes that we have. So magnitude and direction of the static friction force acting on a block with a 30 kilogram block on a 20 degree ramp. So trying to pull the block down is going to be our F G parallel. We have FG perpendicular, which is the force of gravity acting perpendicular to the ramp, which cancels out the normal force, and we're going to have static friction having to hold it up. It wants to slide down, so static friction has to act up the ramp. I'm going to start, apologize for the messiness of that free body diagram. By the way, for ramps, it is perfectly acceptable to have the ramp sort of drawn underneath the free body diagram. Um, it just helps it, specifically, it helps me to um, make sure that everything's perpendicular and parallel as it should be. So, if it's at rest, that says that acceleration is zero, and if acceleration is zero, our Fg parallel has to equal our force of static friction. Well, Fg parallel was mg sine theta, so our force of static friction has to be mg sine theta. And mg sine theta, 30 times 9.8 times sine 20, 30 times 9.8 times sine 20, is 100.55 newtons. That's our magnitude. The direction, fg parallel wants to pull it down the ramp. Static friction has to act utr up the ramp. There's our answer. You'd fill in the numbers for your... Um, free body diagram, the FG perpendicular, and the normal force are both 276.27 newtons. Same thing here, 276.27. Um, the FG parallel, 100.55, and 100.55. Again, I apologize for the messiness. This pen's getting past its normal life. All right, um, so next two minutes we have to finish part B. The block has a coefficient of kinetic friction of 0.1. What is the acceleration of the block? Reminder that on a ramp the acceleration independent of mass was mu k cosine of the angle mu k times g times cosine of the angle minus g times the sine of the angle. So our acceleration go right to it. This is there's no applied force acting on it. If there were an applied force, um, it's a different equation. We have to go back, add mass to each of these. If there were an applied force, that's why it's a different color. You'd have to put the mass back in so that each of those represent forces, and then you have to add the applied force. We're not worrying about that because there is no applied force, so we can cancel everything that we did. So it's 0 0.1 times 9.8 times cosine 20 minus 9.8 times sine 20. And we get 0.1 times 9.8 times cosine 20 minus 9.8 times sine 20. We get negative 2.43 meters per second squared. What does this negative mean? Our negative direction rem reminder was down the ramp. So it just means that our acceleration is 2.43 meters per second squared DTR. Alright, so you guys will work on the worksheet associated with ramp problems and if you have any questions I'll be around to answer them. Alright, bye!